Hi, and welcome to Comsky Corner. Today we're going to be talking about data storage units and characters. We will also be looking at binary additions and binary shifts. This video is specifically for the new OCR GCSE Computer Science course. However, it's applicable for most exam boards. First, let's look at units. On the screen, you can see the units you need to be aware of, from smallest to largest, and how you can convert from one to another. Excluding bits, nibbles, and bytes, the general rule is that if you want to go from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, e.g. from kilobytes to megabytes, you would divide by a thousand. However, if you wanted to go from, say, gigabytes to megabytes, you would do the opposite and multiply by a thousand. As different data storage devices have different fixed capacities, we need to be able to calculate the size of the sound, image, or text file that you want to store to know if the chosen storage device is big enough. To do this, you need to be able to recall and use three equations. The first is to calculate the size of a sound file, where you would do the sample rate times the duration times the bit depth. To find the size of an image file, you would do the color depth times the image height times the image width, noting that image height and image width are measured in pixels. And lastly, to calculate a text file size, you would do the bits per character multiplied by the number of characters. Also, before you complete your calculations, ensure that all the values are in the correct units, as this is an easy way for examiners to catch you out, and you may be required to convert between units either at the beginning or end of a calculation. To add binary values, you need to use these rules. If you're adding two zeros, the result is a zero. A zero and a one gives a one. Two zeros and you get zero carry one. And finally, three ones results in one carry one. These rules will make more sense when we try the following example. So here we are adding the binary values one zero one one and zero one one one. So in the first column, the ones column, we can see that we have two ones. From our rules, we can see that we need to place a zero and then carry a one over to the next column. Now in the next column, including the one we have just carried, we have three ones. Our rules show us that we are going to place a one and then carry a one. In the third column, we again have two ones, so we're going to do the same thing and place the zero and carry a one. And in the last column, we have two ones, including the one we have just carried, so we are going to place a zero and carry a one. Finally, we have a one left over, so we're just going to put that in the answer row as we are essentially adding one and a zero. So our final answer is one zero zero one zero. A simple exam tip is to ensure that when completing binary additions, you show all of your working by showing the ones that you carry. Otherwise, you could lose some simple marks. Next, you need to know what the most and least significant bit of a binary value is, and it's pretty simple. Basically, the most significant bit is the bit in your binary value that has the highest value, so the most left-hand bit. So if we look at this example, the bit in red is the most significant bit. Similarly, the least significant bit is the bit in the binary number with the lowest value, so the bit furthest to the right. So in this example, the least significant bit is the bit in green. Binary shifts follow a simple pattern. If you are multiplying a binary number, shift to the left, but if you are dividing, then shift to the right. Once you know the direction you are moving your binary value in, you just need to know how much to move it by. The amount you shift depends on how much you are multiplying or dividing by. If you are multiplying or dividing by 2, then you will shift 1 place. If you are multiplying or dividing by 4, then you will shift 2 places. You might be able to see a pattern here. The amount you multiply or divide a number by is 2 to the power of the amount of places you shift the binary number. So shifting a binary value 3 places would mean multiplying or dividing by 2 to the power 3 or 8 places. So, if you were to multiply or divide a binary number by 25, then to find out how many times you shift the value, you simply square root the number. So the square root of 25 is 5. So multiplying or dividing a binary number by 25 means that you're going to shift the number 5 places. This may be a little hard to wrap your head around at first, 
but once you try it a few more times, it becomes easier to get the hang of. So let's try an example. On this table, you can see two binary shifts, 5 to 10 and then 10 to 20. Let's start with the shift from the binary value of 5 to the binary value of 10. We know that this is done by multiplying 5 by 2. As we are multiplying the number, we are going to move the binary number some number of places to the left. As we are multiplying by 2, we are going to shift by one place. So we are going to shift the binary value one place to the left and add a 0 as a placeholder at the end. Now, if we were trying to divide by 4, i.e. 20 to 5, we are going to shift to the right by two places. So our binary number of 10100 zero, zero, zero merely becomes 101, one, one, the binary value for 5. If you look at the keyboard of your laptop or your phone, you will see a bunch of different letters, numbers, and symbols. These are characters. Characters are units of information like letters or numbers that are represented using binary codes. This is because data must be stored in a binary format so that it can be processed by the computer. To represent these characters in binary for the computer to use, character sets are used. And character sets are the complete set of characters available to a computer. The more bits a character set contains, the more different binary codes that can be produced, and so the character set is larger as it can store more characters. So we're going to take a look at what happens when you click on a key or a character on your keyboard, and how exactly your computer processes that character using the character set. So firstly, your keyboard will send a binary signal to the computer, telling it which key has been pressed. Then, the computer will use the character set to translate that binary code into a particular character. Lastly, the character will be displayed on the screen. For example, if you clicked on the letter F on your keyboard, it will send the binary code for F, which is 01000110, to the computer, which will find the character that matched the binary code. So it will search the character set until it finds 01. 000110. Then see that the code corresponds to the character F, and then it will display that character on your computer screen. There are two common character sets that you need to know. The first is called ASCII. It's an 8-bit character set that covers all the characters on your keyboard. This includes certain commands like the shift key, as well as the typical numbers, letters, and punctuation. The second character set is Unicode, and this is a 16-bit character set, which means that it has the ability to store more characters as each bit increases the capacity to store more binary numbers that can represent different characters. This is why Unicode can cover any character in any language, rather than being limited to the English keyboard like ASCII. In this video, we have looked at data storage units and characters. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time. Bye!